summary statistics. That was the focus of our last video. And those kind of fit into this bigger picture of descriptive statistics, which could include also visually looking at your data, which many people would prefer over just looking at the mean and median by themselves. So let's look at the data. Let's visually look at it. And how do we do that? Well, for future stat analyses, it's almost always important to look at whether or not your data fit a normal distribution or at least appear to fit a normal distribution. And how do we do that? Well, we may look at whether or not it fits a bell curve, and we can do that using either a QQ plot or a histogram. And I think most people like the histogram, so we're going to start off with that first. So the command is just hist. And if you haven't already attached your data, you're going to have to then type in the object. So I typed in, let's restart this. And I'm going to zoom in here. I typed H-I-S-T parenthesis, and then I can type in the name of the object data set. In this case, we're focusing on the big county health facts data set. So big combined. So I start typing it, I hit the tab button, and that populates it the rest of the way. And then I have to tell it which variable I'm interested in. So that's the dollar sign. So show me the money there. Dollar sign, and then which one? Maybe we're interested in Life Expect 1990. Now, in order to look at the Life Expect 1990 data, once we've done that and I hit enter, it gives me this problem here. And the problem, I'm going to zoom out so you can read the whole text here. It's really got a lot of problems, and it has to do with the fact that this box that's down there in the corner is too small. I have to make this thing bigger. If you don't like all that red text, sorry, it's all there. So let's redo this. And I'm just going to hit the up key, which will repeat that previous command. If I want to see all my previous commands, I can just keep hitting up, 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 and we'll go through a bunch there. I'm going to type it in. Histogram, parentheses, big combined data set, dollar sign, life expectancy 1990. And then enter. And there it is. Now, right now, it's a little hard to see. It's scrunched. If you export it, it will look better. I can show you what it will look like as an image just by even on my computer when I do save as image, it shows me what it looks like. So it still looks a little more scrunched than what I might like. I can try to tweak with this or alter it to see if that will affect it any. Save as image. So, you know, not exactly ideal. Export, save as image. A little more stretched out there. You can update these things and change them. You can maintain the ratio, all that kind of stuff. You can view the plot after saving it. I'll try that. There it is, scrunched. Let's export it, save as an image. Um, I'm going to maintain the aspect ratio. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to save it. View plot after savings checked. And then that's how it appears. And part of the reason why it's so long is that variable name is, you know, huge for that command. So I can shorten that command because I've attached this, that data set, right? I've done the attach and then the big combined attach, big, combine. I've done that already. So they're all attached. Histogram. And now let's just do the life expect 1990. I run it. And now there's already a lot going on in that plot thing. Believe me, it may show up on yours. It used to show up on mine very clearly. I think because I'm running this recording thing and the bandwidth issues might be blocking it. But if I were to do export, save as image, I'm going to see it. And that's what it looks like. And I can even save it. And that's what this looks like. So that's the graph. I don't really like how scrunched that scale is. And there are ways of altering the scales. And we can deal with those later. All right. Another type of plot that you might be interested in would be 
how well does the distribution fit along with respect to, and I'm gonna clear that to get it at the top, to the normal line. So there's a thing called the QQ norm plot, or QQ plot. But I'm gonna do QQ norm, and then we'll do life expect 1990. And believe me, it's actually done it. It's just something's going on with the graphics on this computer right now. So they're there, yours may present similar problems, but it's there. I can export this, save as an image, and there it is. Um, there's some graphics issues. I don't necessarily like the way that this plot looks. I think it could look a lot nicer. Um, I could probably alter this and make it occupy this whole space, and that definitely presents a lot better save as an image so probably that was the issue so pretty easy um, graph to look at a truly normal distribution perfectly normal will follow that but here we've got a few outliers on this side and a few outliers there when we did the histogram you would be able to see it so it tried to create it but something's going on with my graphics here on the computer or the Google Chrome. If I save as image, I can see it. And, you know, that's kind of a bell curve, but, you know, I don't necessarily truly think it's a bell curve. There's a few more on this side of the mean, probably. Um, but, you know, it's kind of got that bell curve shape. If you need a definitive, um, you know, p value based approach, there is a thing called the Shapiro-Wilk test that's out there, and we'll do that here in a second uh, for the next video. Um, I caution you though, like you know, when you're using large data sets, it's very easy to have a statistically significant difference from the bell curve, from the normal distribution. Large data sets, a small amount of difference can actually be significant due to the power of the data set to detect significant differences. So some of these normality tests generally aren't recommended for huge data sets and even sometimes when you're going up above a thousand or two thousand. So it's better to kind of use that judgment call on your part by looking at the data and looking at the whole picture before you would assume that the data are truly not normally distributed or not. But for smaller data sets, normality tests are okay. We're going to do an example here in the next video.